Good day, Grade 10s. In this revision lesson, we're going to be looking at some questions on the periodic table. So it says, electronic configurations of several elements are given in the table. So we've got the atomic number, and then we've got the electronic configuration. Okay, so first of all, it says, which of these elements is a noble gas? So if we know the noble gases have an outer electron shell, which is full, and we know that S orbitals have a maximum of two electrons and P orbitals have a maximum of six. So therefore we can say, well, it's obviously going to be this one here and that's it. It is number 10. Next question says, define atomic number. We know atomic number is the number of protons. The atomic number equals the number of protons in the nucleus. In the nucleus. Okay, right. And what is this telling us? Electronic configuration is telling us not only how the electrons are configured, but the number of electrons. Okay. Which of these elements has the lowest first ionization energy? So ionization energy is the energy required to move an electron. Okay. So that basically what you need to realize is that the further these electrons are away from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove an electron. So basically we need to look for the electron that's got the electron, an atom that's got an electron in the biggest outer energy shell and that would be number 13. So number 13 is going to have the lowest first ionization energy because you have to remove that electron there which is in 3p1 compared to these here which are in 2p's and this which is in 3s's. Okay so that's furthest away from the nucleus. Which element will form anions with a charge of negative 1? Okay so if it needs to form an anion it needs to be able to very easily lose an electron. So we're looking at atoms that would rather lose an electron than gain an electron. So I would say it would have to be this dude over here, number 11, because 11 is at 3s1. So it's so much easier. If I lose that one electron, I will go back to 2p6. And that means that I would be a noble gas. So I would very happily lose that electron to have a charge of minus one and have the stable structure of a noble gas. Because remember we said that number 10 was a noble gas because it had a filled up outer shell. Let's see another question. It says sodium is a metal using many salts. Explain why sodium has a low electron affinity with reference to its electron configuration. Elements with high electron affinity form anions and explain why. Okay, well let's just do the second bit first. The second bit says elements have a high electron affinity form anions. Well, anions are negative ions. And obviously if you have a high electron affinity, it means you easily attract electrons. And if you easily attract electrons, obviously then you're going to become an anion. So that's pretty easy. That was very easy. Now let's talk about sodium. So where is sodium in your periodic table? Sodium is in your first, okay, group. So sodium is basically, it is in group one and period three. So if I had to write the SPDF notation for sodium, it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. Okay, now it says explain why sodium has a low electron affinity with reference to its electron figura configuration. So as we spoke about in the last slide, what will sodium do? Do you agree that sodium will actually it has an option because it is in group one. It either can gain another five elect no six seven electrons seven electrons to become noble, or it can just lose this one. If it loses this one electron, then it becomes a nice stable an atom, and it looks like a noble gas. In fact, it looks like neon. This is the structure of neon. So if it loses that electron, it has the same structure as neon. Okay, and neon is a noble gas. So why does it have a low electron affinity? Because it doesn't want any more electrons. In fact, it's happy to give this away. Okay, and that is why. Let's look at another question. 
It says the following table shows the first ionization energies for elements of periods 1 and 2. So you've got hydrogen, helium, and then lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, etc., etc. So those are, this basically is row 1 and row 2, period 1, period 2, right? And notice how, let's look at the ionization energies, and this is what I do whenever I do these questions. I first look to see what I'm looking at before I even look at the questions, because a lot of times by me just looking at this, I can decide, work out what they're probably going to ask, and then I can get it much easier, okay, the answer much easier. Do you see that here, the ionization energy is going up, then it drops down, and then it goes back up, okay. So let's have a look at the questions. The first question says, identify the pattern of the first ionization energies in a period. Oh, that's pretty easy. As you go across the period, the ionization energies increase. So, as you go across the period, the ionization energies, the first ionization energies increase. In grade 10, you can't write it out like this. I'm just doing it so that you don't have to watch me write out slowly, okay? You write it out properly. Okay, so we answered that question already, so that's why it's so easy. Let's look at the next question. It says, which two elements exert the strongest attractive forces on the electrons? Use the data in the table to supply the reason for your answer. Now, ionization energy is the energy that you need to become an ion, okay? So basically, you need to be able to lose an electron to become this anion. So I would say that helium and neon have got the highest, they've got the strongest attractive force on the electrons. Why? Because they've got the highest first ionization energy. That is the energy required to remove the first electron off, off that atom. So that's pretty easy. And why? Because they're stable. They're noble gases. They're stable. They don't want to lose electrons. It says draw up by diagrams for the two elements and explain why these elements are so stable. Okay, so if I draw an off by diagram for helium, remember your off by diagram is your little circles or, or blocks which we prefer. So for helium, we just have 1s2. That's all it is. Okay, it's, so therefore we know that it's going to be like this. There's going to be an atom here, an atom here with an electron in one direction, electron in another direction in the first s orbital. And that's it. It is full. It doesn't want to lose those electrons. So it's very stable. If I drew the up by diagram for neon, you're going to have to go, so here we go, here is 1s2, then there's 2s2, and then there's 2p6, so it becomes 1s2, 2s2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so you can see that the bi from the up diagram that the orbitals are all full. There's no reason to gain electrons, no reason to lose electrons, and that is why they are so stable. It says, is it, it is safer to use helium gas and hydrogen gas in balloons. Which property of helium makes it the safest substitute? Well, this, this, the fact that it is full, it is stable, it has no reason to lose an electron. Okay, and because the fact that the ionization energy, the energy required to move an electron is so high, compared to hydrogen, which is half that. Okay, so... Finally, it says, group one elements readily form positive ions. Is the statement correct? Explain your answer by referring to the table. And yes, obviously it is, because if you look here, group one, this is group one. This is the first element in group one, and that's your second element in group two, in, in group one. It's in period two, but group one. And you will see that they have got the lowest ionization energies for each of their periods, and therefore they're most likely to lose an electron and form positive ions. Right, great tens again. If you don't understand what's been going on in this lesson, please go revise the section and then go do the questions and then come back here. Have a great day.